Soil salinization and sodification are two major soil degradation processes which have been threatening our ecosystem. They break down the soils and affect their ability to uh, grow our food. Uh, soil salinity has indeed been a pressing challenge in marginal environments such as the UAE where water is scarce and uh, soils are rather poor. My name is Rima and I'm the Emirates Soil Museum curator uh, and I'm very happy to be with you today as we celebrate World Soil Day. The Emirates Soil Museum is an initiative by ICBA or the International Centre for Biosaline Agriculture uh, which is located in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates with the vision and the mission of telling the story of uh, soils, but also educating and raising awareness about the importance of maintaining healthy soils. Today, I'm here with a very special scientist. Her name is Dr. Lira. She is a, a halophyte agronomist, and she's been involved in various um, innovative and sustainable initiatives and projects running here at ICBA, such as the integrated aqua, uh, agri aquaculture systems using reject brine from desalination units and also cultivating uh, salt loving plants, which we call also halophytes. Hello, Dr. Lira. It's a great pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate World Soil Day. Dr. Lira, first to begin with, can you briefly tell us a little bit about yourself as a halophyte agronomist? Uh, thank you, Rima, for the introduction. And it's a real pleasure uh, to be invited for this uh, special uh, day, uh, the World uh, Soil Day. Uh, so the integrated uh, agri-aquaculture system is um, um, uh, a system that uh, combines uh, agriculture and aquaculture uh, components utilizing the reject brine uh, from desalination. And why actually we are focusing on the reject brine? Um, we are all familiar that uh, in, um, 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 in regions like Middle East and North Africa, almost 70% of the reject brine is produced in this uh, region. So we fully understand that in order to produce food in desert, in hot and arid climates, uh, reject brine is a huge, it's a massive uh, water resource that could be utilized for food production. So this is where exactly we are focusing in a more unconventional way to produce food uh, utilizing this uh, byproduct from desalination to grow fish and then the fish waste are, uh, are utilized as um, nutrients, as fertilizer uh, to grow these salt uh, loving plants, the so-called halophytic um, uh, plants. So what is exactly a halophyte and how uh, because as uh, my colleague Rima said, I'm uh, a halophyte agronomist. So I'm focusing on how we can grow um, in a sustainable uh, way with the proper management practices, these uh, salt uh, loving plants that can be used for various uses, for food, cons um, for human consumption as food, uh, even as animal feed and for other industrial and medicinal uses as well. Very, very interesting. Thank you very much, Dr. Lira. Can we have a look at the integrated uh, agri aquaculture systems and have a look at how it works inside? Do you want to show us around? Yes, for sure. Please welcome. So uh, we start, uh, as you see here, we have our uh, aquaculture system uh, established. So we, this is where actually we grow uh, tilapia with the reject brine from desalination. Just to give you an idea, the salinity of the water that we are testing for tilapia is approximately 80% of the seawater salinity, which is really uh, high, uh, um, I mean, uh, water salinity to consider for uh, production components uh, to grow. Uh, so uh, tilapia is producing uh, through the waste ammonia, uh, we have then ammonia is decomposed through nitrifying bacteria to nitrite and then to nitrate. So the nitrate is the useful uh, form of nitrogen that is utilized later on by our halophytic plants um, and specifically salicornia. So we are applying here uh, what we call the saline aquaponics uh, because and why saline? Uh, because normally aquaponics are fresh water based. However, since we are utilizing the reject brine from desalination, we are calling it as saline-based uh, aquaponics. Um, so apart from the uh, growing salicornia 
uh, in, um, uh, with water uh, coming from the fish, we are also growing salicornia in the field, so in, in the soil actually. Um, of course, uh, the salinity management issues is something that uh, we have to take care of uh, so that uh, we can avoid through, leaching, through application of uh, leaching fractions and drainage systems and proper applied drainage systems to avoid uh, the salts built up uh, in the soil. Very good. Let's have a look at the fish tanks. Would you like to show us? Yes, for sure. So you mentioned tilapia as the fish species that are growing in such haline, uh, saline, yes. highly saline uh, uh, environment. Yes, yes. Are there any other species that can be grown in this? Uh, yes, for sure. Uh, to understand that, um, uh, I mean, we can grow other seawater based uh, fish species as well, like sea green, sea bass. Uh, or even some local fish species that can be found in UAE and can increase the market uh, uh, price and the profitability of the system overall. However, tilapia is, uh, let's say, disease, salinity and um, temperature resistant as a fish species and frankly speaking is easy to grow. So this is why tilapia is very popular in such kind of systems to, in to integrate as a fish species. No. Amazing. So you have three fish tanks over here. So Correct. this is the second step after desalination. After that, we uh, have the water that is full of waste and fish waste, which is nutrients uh, for the, the, the plants, right? Correct. So after the fish tanks, we have uh, two uh, stages, two more stages, where actually the water from the fish is filtered. Uh, so in the biofiltration tank, we have a mechanical filter filters like these biomedia bowls and of course um, uh, in these biomedia bowls there are some nitrifying bacteria that uh, they have their colonies here. Mm -hmm. uh, so this dirt that you see here is exactly these bacteria that are um, uh, living in this uh, bowl. Uh, so why we are having such kind of uh, let's say items, I mean and these bowls here exactly to increase the surface of the bacteria to grow and to um, propagate uh, because they need more surface area. And apart from that, uh, the bacteria, they need some time uh, as the water from the fish and the waste comes uh, through in this specific tank, uh, they need time to decompose. Right. So we are somehow through this kind of mechanical um, uh, approach. We try exactly to delay uh, the water coming out uh, from this specific tank so that we can exactly maximize the decomposition of ammonia yeah. to nitrate which is actually the useful form of nitrogen by the halophytic plants later on. Perfect. All right, so then the next stage will be the uh, halophytes, right? Can you tell us a little bit more about the species of halophytes that you've been, uh, that have been showing some promising results uh, in such uh, hostile and saline environments? Yes, for sure. So one of our, let's say, flagship uh, halophytic and, and uh, plants and these salt loving plants that we are growing uh, here at Igba are um, is actually salicornia. So this is, um, um, I mean, um, uh, you can see that this is a fresh, um, I mean, it's a fresh, uh, it's a salicornia at a fresh uh, vegetative stage. Uh, although now it's moving to the flowering stage, so you see here the flowers yeah, yeah, are yeah. developed, the yellow and the white, uh, the yellow spots and the white hairs right. here. Uh, so Salicornia, uh, why there is so much focus on it? Uh, first of all, this is this species Salicornia bigelovi. So this is uh, it was introduced. Let's say although there is a na native species of Salicornia here in uh, UAE, it's called Salicornia europea. Uh, however, uh, the Salicornia bigelovi species has the uh, ability to, uh, specifically for the seeds, it, they have higher um, oil content right. in the seeds. Right. Uh, so, uh, Salicornia can be uh, utilized as uh, for human consumption, so we can cut the fresh tips and they can be uh, consumed as fresh or um, through the collaboration that we have uh, with the food company Global Food Industries here in UAE, uh, we are um, uh, developing um, salicornia-based food products like burgers, uh, like uh, crackers, um, 
uh, biscuits, even juices, sweets, and salty even uh, products, which are really interesting to for someone to explore. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Lira. Can you tell us a little bit more about how ICBA and your team has been working on raising awareness about the nutritional benefits of uh, these halophytic products? Yes, for sure. Correct. So starting from Salicornia, of, of course, and from ICBA point of view, um, uh, of course, Salicornia is, let's say, our uh, first um, uh, one of the flagship halophytic crops that we are really much, very much focusing on how to, apart from, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, applying the proper management practices and improve the agronomic management of this halophyte, we are also focusing on the value chain of it. And apart from Salicornia, we're also having in the pipeline some other halophytes too, um, uh, that, that can follow the same direction, like for example, a sea beet, like rock um, um like ice plant even. So uh, we run exactly because we want to focus and to increase the market segment here in UAE. Uh, we are um, applying, we are uh, been running for the last two years now, the Halofiti Kitchen Lab uh, program, uh, where we, uh, the target is to raise public awareness. So we have participants coming from universities, from schools, from corporate sector, and they are becoming more familiar about sustainable uh, farming in the desert. Uh, and also about the important, the nutritional benefits uh, of these um, halophytic crops uh, and also about, in general, how we can increase um, and the importance of having a more increased uh, local produced food in UA and beyond uh, uh, the borders of UA. Um, so uh, we of course, the COVID uh, unfortunately somehow impeded our plans, but from the last summer onwards until now, we were really happy to have more than 200, 300 participants um, attending this Hello Fitty Kitchen Lab program, raising awareness with a great positive feedback about this activity. Amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Lira. It was a great pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank you for taking the time to talk us through these pioneering projects. Um, these are only some of the many uh, innovative and sustainable projects happening here at ICBA. Uh, we welcome you to visit our website if you'd like to find out more about our uh, projects and initiatives. And also, of course, please visit us at our premises for a field tour and a museum tour. Happy World Soul Day, everyone.